bit of recorded history, a bit of ancient history. Alright, so, kicking off on Arabia. Hut spawning as English. Instantly taking the mining and lumber camps. And Dinky spawning as English as well. Alright, so... Like any Age of Empires 4 game, I can just sit back and relax and not really talk a lot for about 5 minutes. While they figure out what the hell they're going to do. Scout the map. We hear a lot of bells. An awful lot of bells. Hut's actually just walking these sheep back. I said this is a more efficient way to do it, I guess. Well, Dinky would have brought the sheep back, so Hut's scouting is just phenomenal doing that. I think it's actually something that I first tried and then went, eh, nah, it's not that good. And I think most most players with the uh, experience from the other age games probably would have done the same at some point and then realized, oh no, nah, it's just easier if we just wander me scout back and then just deselect them all here. But Hut's just like, nah, fuck it. I'm going to stick with the old tried and true method. I'll go rally the initial three. Straight back to the town center, I'll just fucking get the extra scouting mileage. But for now, nothing hugely different from either of our players. I don't think either of them is going to go for a second scout. It's English versus English, so... In this matchup, I guess you sort of want high veil count, not spending the extra resources on the scout. And just work towards that quicker age too, for a for a big battle. I suppose the beauty of being English is that you've got access to man at arms. So you'd think English for English would just be like a longbowman or longbowman horseman span, but really, man at arms being a heavy infantry can. Tank that that little bit better. So you might see a mix of man at arms and spearmen. Because the spearmen will no doubt be good at denying horsemen being able to sit on top of your bowmen and kill them all. So I'm not really sure what these guys are going to make. You know, it might just be towers. A bit like Rus v Rus. Which is just, just, just rusting to watch. But so be it. Oh, we have got a second scout here. The hut. And I don't know if Dinky went for one. So I wonder if this is to disrupt gold gathering or... Two scouts. And English v English is interesting. I'm sorry, I'm actually... I'm not all that caught up with like how the high levels actually metagame one another. So... I'm still a bit green, haven't played a huge amount of AoE 4. But these guys obviously have, and they're very, very talented as well. And so HUD, having two scouts can really snatch all the safer sheep, if there are any around, for Dinky. And it looks like he's got one for each scout so far. Ta-da! Hasn't covered a huge amount more ground than he would with just one, considering he crossed the map with them basically side by side. But, this way he can at least harass that villager a little bit harder. Oh, he's not going to be able to too much because that town center's um, in range, and being English town center does have that extra arrow that it fires. So both these players getting a good read on when the council hall is going up, how many villages they've got, which is an even number at four. Yeah, yeah. I like how Dinky's killed all these guys in a perfect line there. 
Because yeah, if you can get them all as close as possible, it's more efficient than having them just sort of standing around the edge, manually rallying them right up against the edge, rather than clicking on the building itself, is a little bit more efficient. Just little macro tricks, and like, having a pair of villagers attack a deer so it dies in one shot, rather than taking a hit, running away and dying in another. Things like that you got to be careful of. And yeah, you, you rarely see high level players building stuff with more than two villagers, except for landmarks where they'll go to like four to six. It's funny, it's like the same numbers as AOEO to be honest, which is nice. Although it's weird, in AOEO people got into the habit of this meta where we throw down our second town centers, um, because aging up has no prerequisite in that, and there's no landmarks. You basically age up and immediately throw down a town center every age. Um, and people got in the habit of, instead of using like four to six fields, using like fucking nine or ten, but building it like right next to your first one. So it's, it's sort of a bit of a mindfuck. Figuring out how many vills to put on a landmark to start with, I guess. And it's probably actually easiest for players coming from AoE, whereas the other AoE, a other AoEs, um, like AoE 2, you probably have a, a shitload of villagers forcing it up. Same with AOM. AoE 3, you probably have just one villager building it. But anyway, I don't know if Dinky's really started adding any vermin yet. But. That's added one. I thought I saw him print more uh, out, but he must have cancelled them. But he's added a single bowman for now. A lot of farms going down for both our players, but Dinky's slightly ahead on that count at the moment. Adding a stables, which Hut is has not seen just yet. Well, oh, Dinky seeing mostly just farms. So this stables gonna go unnoticed for now. Well, there's one coming up here for Hut. In fact, he's going to commit to two and throw down a King's Palace. It's, it's a very fast castle age incoming for both our players. It's been a very passive early game while they work towards this quick castle. The King's Palace. For both these players, it's going to be very, very handy. So, second town centre as a landmark. Both of them having the count. Council Hall is the first. So, double speed training bowmen. And access to all the bowmen upgrades. But I don't think they can actually train um, crossbows, annoyingly. But Monastery going down for Hut already. Already finished for Dinky. Are these players really eager to get at the uh, relics. So Dinky's already got a knight. And there's a pair out for Hut now.
Deciding against the outpost up there, Dinky. I guess he'll go for the one at the more distant sacred site. So the sacred sites actually do generate a little bit of gold. I think it's a little bit less than what the relics offer, but it is some nonetheless. So Dinky's going to try and go for this forward relic before he worries about these safer ones. Besides, if he can get this tower up, he's sort of got possession of this one. And this one's a little bit easier to take. But in saying that, Hut's going to park a knight on it. But Dinky bringing up some troops to reinforce this monk. Is he going to be able to get out of here in time, though? So conversions are actually a big area convert. Not sure on the exact duration, but it throws up a big aura and you just got to get outside of it. So finally a proper clash going down here. But the, the scout absorbing that, while that goes down faster, it does save health on your knights. So if Hunt micros as well, he should be able to get a lot of knights. So coming out of that, ahead on knights, because Dinky actually hit the scout with the charge. But now Dinky having added another knight, it's tricky because he's microing it just as well. Now there's another knight v knight clash. Neither player having any upgrades, so it comes down to who had more health initially and who got the charge damage off. Got another knight of huts being picked off down here by Dinky. So Dinky nearly settling the score there. And grabbing possession of this relic on the bottom of the map. So he's up to two. Hut is up to one. Yeah, Hut's got possession of another relic here. It's only four out. Five out. So Hut's got another one here. So I think there's five relics in total. Hut on four. Dinky. I mean, Hut on two. Dinky on two, but about to go to three. And it's going to come down to Sacred Site possession. But Dinky is going to rest assured, knowing that he does have the one relic over his opponent. So the thing with the monk conversion is that they need to have a relic, but it's all area conversion. Meanwhile, having monks out in the field is nice because you can get the sacred sites. You reinforce them with some towers. You're in a really nice spot. So Dinky going to be able to secure that third relic and be able to use that monk to try and gain possession of another sacred site. So he's probably not looking out right win off sacred site possession, but just holding them does give him that little bit of an economic trickle. But if he's gonna have, if he's gonna be dropping monks to hold it, it becomes a little bit difficult um, to justify. So he might just let that one go for now, or maybe even look at sniping the knight. 
if you can send two or three knights, you can pick that one off in return. Well, it's it's not going to bother going for the outpost. Oh, but the outpost actually has that um, arrow slits upgrade, so it's going to be able to mess with a knight. So the sacred site does fall, but yeah, the knight's going to get picked off. I wonder if HUD could have microed that back out of range. For now, Dinky's going to seed both of these sacreds, but look at gaining possession of the third, and I think that's where he'll probably look at making his move, because he's going to start adding crossbowmen, but so is HUD. So, both these players with crossbowmen, knights, and with some monks to try and gain possession of these sacreds because like I said they probably aren't looking at getting a, a 3 all sacred possession win because you got to hold on for 10 minutes like it's a wonder in three different spots but the beauty is holding one or two of them is a nice passive um, gold generation not too different to relic gold gen so I think if you can hold on for I don't know the exact rate I know relics is 100 a minute that village are being healed. Not quite enough. The outpost being cancelled there by Dinky. He must want the. Uh, does he need. Yeah, he must want the wood to get another one up somewhere else or to get some crossbowmen out. Probably make some crossbowmen actually. He and Hut pretty dead even in terms of score at the moment. Sort of 20 points in it and it's trading back and forth. So Dinky securing a second. Sacred and gonna come into the center one and try and force Hut to take an engagement. So the crossbowmen focusing down individual knights. While we get some of your knights are attacking enemy crossbowmen's always pretty nice. But somehow Hut's main making it work, forcing Dinky to retreat here. He's got his monks here to help heal as well, so this is really helping the low knights. Dinky getting a last couple of kills as Hunt retreats there, but Hunt definitely the more successful player overall in that fight. The score is definitely reflecting it now. It's gone from pretty much dead even to slightly favoring Hut, and then on top of that, he secured both of these sacreds. He's got that healing from the monks, while I don't think Dinky's got a monk in his army range at the moment. He could always look at bringing this one back for now. Rather than waiting for it to get killed when a knight comes through to uh, take this off you, bring the monk home and use it to heal up the low knights. Well, Hut, yeah, he's... He's going to hide this monk, maybe. Yeah, he's going to look at hiding this monk in the corner. So, even if Dinky does send a, a knight here to reclaim the sacred... Um, he can just leave the monk here. He's still getting vision of this gold mine in case Dinky goes to take it. So very nifty use of that one monk. Because he's already got some here to help heal the army. Um, he might as well do so. So Dinky could probably look at either parking this monk. Uh, maybe behind this wood pocket here. Or, yeah, or bringing it home with the army. But for now, he's got... Uh, hut on his doorstep. So he's going to bring his crossbows up. And he's not put them up too far that he's going to bleed too many of them. Because remember, he picked off a couple of knights there, so that was a good move by him. But I don't know, I think Hunt might have just a tad too much for him to deal with at the moment. He's having to fight right on his doorstep, so it is a bit do or die here, but he has got good control of his crossbows, nothing seems to be getting onto him at the moment. He's picking off these man at arms with ease. He's uh, managing to fight the enemy crossbowmen under his own town center fire here, so this is giving him a little bit of support. I don't think they're terribly good against heavy, uh, heavier armored units. So the crossbowmen numbers really thinning down on both sides, but there is some longbows in the background here to chip away at the, the crossbows from just outside of their range and just outside of the range of the town center here. 
and there is Man at Arms still backing up, so Hunt gonna have to retreat, but overall I think it's been a pretty good push. Because he's definitely maintained map control, but Dinky, some fast thinking here, he's gonna be able to deny this tower from going up. There's another couple of towers. So I keep calling them towers, it's in a habit from other age titles. Outposts, sorry. So, got another knight peering through the gaps of the wall there. That might even be best off rallying back just to kill him. Just, ah, oh, here we go. He's going to find some others to kill. But he might be too low to take on. Oh, he has got just enough health to take on all three. But even still, it looks like Dinky's going to be able to wall up around this sacred site. And so, Dinky. 1 to 2 on sacred sites, but 3 to 2 on relics. But he's quick to send some knights in to try and kill this straggler. But Hut's here, he's ready. And he's going to look at trying to apply some pressure on both sides because he's got a keep over here. And if he can get some siege, he can start laying waste these buildings or that villages on the, the wood line there. It's an impressive number of mounted arms. They're going to be able to take this sacred site with ease, I think. And Dinky, is he going to look at heading down to respond or is he going to look at trying to push out? But it's going to be hard for him to push out anywhere here because Hut's going to know. And if he, he can't run head long into the fort, I mean into the keep. This is a upgraded outpost, so it's going to prove to be quite resilient. So ultimately does fall. Meanwhile, a bit of harass here. From Dinky, he's managed to slip those knights through. So he's going to have to deal with ceding a lot more ground. Now to Hut, who is going to maintain possession of three sacred sites if he's not careful. He's trying to push out. There is an outpost here and Siege Workshop incoming. So these knights successful in forcing gold gatherers to garrison there, but that lone knight's going to have to retreat, he might just have to settle with picking off a couple of villages in the back of his opponent's base. And meanwhile, Trebuchet in play here for Dinky, but he's got to keep it safe from Hut. He's getting some good kills with his mass of crossbowmen here, but in the meanwhile, crossbowmen and Man at Arms making light work of a lot of his villagers. His own knight here is uh, really proving to be quite cost effectively disruptive, forcing a bit of a, a pullback and quite a garrison, but at least interrupting the gather time. I think he might have. He might even get a vill or two. The hut's going to try repairing this keep. He's got his own trebuchet to be chipping down these outposts, the upgraded one there. A knight. Does get another couple of villages, but is going to fall. But Hut's quick to take the third sacred site. And quick to retreat with this little harassing force. He doesn't want his split up army to be taking an engagement against uh, Dinky's whole army. But if he can keep moving with the split army, he can look at pushing as soon as he uh, maxes out. So, I mean, he really just needs to get one house and spam a couple of buildings. I uh, mean, spam a couple of units and. He's pretty much good to go at, and pushing into Dinky, who's, uh, oh, Dinky's pretty much maxed as well. So both of these players, quite substantial armies here. But Hut, now, lift the pressure on his side because he's holding all the sacred sites. So arrow slits on this outpost, so it's not really going to be super helpful here.
outside the trebs. Going to be able to allow Dinky to roll forward right now. Did Hut overstay his welcome? The Hut a bit surrounded there. Big fight going in now. I don't know who's going to pull out ahead of this one, but Dinky definitely looking quite scary now that he's working out of his base. Both players entering age four now. What are we going to see added to the compositions of the players? An arrow volley for Hart. Outposts falling down the hut right now. And the trap, I think, can even just land various shots on the infantry. So, Dinky having to bring up a lot of villagers to commit to that. And Hut right now is raiding the hell out of him with these uh, man at arms. Really denying that food gathering. Really nice push there from him. Meanwhile, the Trebs still making work of anything Hutt's trying to bring into this position. But he is slowly building a bit of a lead, and these Man at Arms being a bit of a pain to deal with. They're forcing Dinky to have to bring some army through his base, which is also going to be messy to have to bring back out of his base. And meanwhile, while he's gathering through this, he's bleeding villages slowly. So Hutt. He's going to get cleaned up eventually over here, and things have settled down, but it has allowed time for Hutt to add his own keep, which Dinky isn't rallied onto just yet. In the meanwhile, he is taking pot shots at Dinky's keep, so the single treb, though well, it's now two trebs, are going to be able to snatch shot down this keep before his opponent's three trebs can return fire. And ooh, Hutt going to try and slow down the gold gathering at Dinky here who doesn't really have the gold bank that Hutt does so if Hutt can disrupt this gold gathering and basically mine out this top gold Dinky's really starved for gold and he's got to look at trying to oh, I don't know try and safe market somewhere which then you're not gathering efficiently for the population you're investing in the caravans compared to riskier longer markets you know, which you need more map control for, or more established walls. And so, Dinky gonna force down this keep, but he's gonna have to repair his own and move forward to take out his opponent's trebs. And in the meanwhile, Hut with a very smart keep here, it's gonna mean he's got this harass on that gold mine without spending on any population on it, and he's it's gonna force Dinky to have to bring down. A trebuchet. How annoying. And then meanwhile, Dinky. I think he's taken out one of the trebs of huts. And there we go. Arrow volley. So the increased attack speed on the longbowman. Meanwhile, Dinky. Denied gold at the moment. Neither player, I think, has got really a lot of gold in the bank. I think he actually has a little bit more than Hut at the moment. And so Dinky pushing forward with some towers, bringing everything forward. Even both these players getting kills on one another's uh, infantry with their trebuchets at the moment. But I think Dinky's ultimately the more successful one in the middle here. Still continuing to roll forward.
So Dinky trying to add more buildings as well. Both players are. Well, actually, sorry, just Dinky. Maybe Hut's best off doing the same. Because they do seem to eat the shots while you you seem to be able to focus down your opponent's trebs and it, and the infantry. I mean, if you do take arrow slits, or if you manage to even get um, the spring ult upgrade in range, we've got a bit of an engagement going on down here, and it looks like Hut's actually crept ahead in terms of score, and he's even got a bunch of hand cannoneers in the mix. But those are some nice shots from the Trebs of Dinky at the moment. While well, the Trebs at Hut really just being re-engaged at the moment, the villagers in the mix. Why well, didn't be able to sneak in to torch one of these trebs? I think both of the trebs are going to go down and GG. Game over. Dinky takes game number one.